So we've got this nice fillet. This is FGCI uh, laminating epoxy mixed with quarter inch chop strand and uh, basically a Cavasil cotton flock mix. So we've got the radius all the way around. Just super duper strong. Everything on the inside of the helm pod has been laminated. It's dried, cured. So what I'm gonna do right now is I'm gonna sand this down, grind it, get it smooth. Same thing with inside here, all these sharp edges. So I'm gonna smooth all this out. So I've also got two of the last pieces of that dusky engine, engine box. This is what I'm thinking. I think these would be great in the corners basically serve as a seat, you know, something nice to sit on, also be a little bit of storage. I want to address this separation for material where, you know, water and just the sun has really abused this. Um, it's been a couple months since I've worked on this boat. So what I wanna do is trim these down and then pack this, I'll grind a little bit out and then use some of the FGCI epoxy, another mix similar to what I did up there with quarter inch chop strand and uh, cotton flock aerosol mix, cavasil mix, and then cut out a door, a little walkway basically, and probably do a little track so that it's got like a guillotine door that can slide up and down. That's the thought so far. So that's what I'm gonna do. And then as soon as those things are dry, um, I just want to do a temporary rigging on the boat and take this thing for a test run. What do you think? <laughs> it's going to be fun. Um, I've been trying to be patient with test running this, but I'm getting excited. This is going to be uh, quite a wild ride. Got this marked off. I just eyeballed it. Go with something a little bit funky, straight, angled, angled up there. Pretty much gonna be the non-symmetrical boat build just to mess with my mind. It's funny how we we want everything to be symmetrical naturally, but um, you know, how much does that limit us from, from doing things that are more functional just because we want them to be symmetrical and look better? I don't know, think about that. So got it cut, let's check it out. So all of it now is super, it's still bonded, which is good. Oh, maybe a little separation there. One other spot, just about an inch worth. I'll just do a little epoxy, push this and uh, put some epoxy in there. And then when I pack the top, the edges of this, um, it'll be good to go. So what I'm gonna do right now is just round off all the corners, edges, and then I'm just gonna hollow out a little uh, like trench in this foam, the same way I did the front bulkhead. That way when I pack it, it's got, you know, a quarter inch worth of material in there, make it super strong, um, have it sealed off, so yeah. Almost done with the grinding today. All right, so all of the prep work is done. I'm gonna clean up this work area. We'll do some FGCI epoxy putty custom mix. Let's do it. All right, so I'm gonna show you some of the tools that I used to get all this prepping done. So I'll just walk you through it. First off, I did all the straight cuts. I was just with the circular saw. I got my straight cuts as far as I could and then you know, the circular saw blade would only go so far. So I basically used a little hand uh, reciprocating saw to just get the last bits. That way I could punch it all out. 
I used, this works really well. You can use these discs. Um, they're just abrasive discs that FGCI sells. Um, you can use it on an angle grinder or on this little pistol powered deal. But what I did was I just ran it angled and you can see there's a little concave. So I just ran it right down there. Um, and that just gave me my little, my little rut. You can see the texture there. And then what I did was I ran this just in the edge, ran it down to create this little channel that the resin can sit in. So I did that throughout. And then I rounded some of my edges um, and then some of the rougher stuff. I used the grittier abrasive disc. Um, this is the 36 grit. And again, you can get this at FGCI. One last part, where is it? Here it is. I use this just to knock down some of the radius and the, um, my little corners here. Um, just knock them down, get a nice radius. If I were to do fairing work on this, then I could use this again and really it's a really quick way to do a nice radius quickly. Trying to get some video in the middle of it. All right, so I got my putty. I coated everything with FGCI straight resin, epoxy resin. Then I did my FGCI chop strand with cotton flock. And now I'm just laminating, doing one lamination over 1708. Got everything cleaned up. Ooh, it's already kicked off. So it's, I don't know, about two hours ago and it's been in the direct sunlight. So, you know, which is like a major no-no with glass work. I'll let it bake and then probably in the morning give it a little trim. So what I'm going to do next is actually rig this so that we can go for a test run. Here we go. We got our cables. I'm going to punch a hole in the helm. All right. I'm very scientific with, with how I measure where I need to drill. So everything's hooked up. Getting ready for a test run. Let's see what we got back here. And a fire hazard. A simple setup. Some helm. Man, this is awesome. We're running. It's about time for a test run. What do you think? So what I'm gonna do is tomorrow morning, put the boat on the trailer early, take it over to the boat ramp, go for a test run. In the morning, I'm gonna do a quick trim here. This is already pretty dry, but I wanna let it dry a little bit more. I'll do a quick trim, smooth it out, and we'll be ready. All right, so what I'm gonna do now is just cut off these little edges because these are like razor blades. Get these trimmed off. And then yeah, be ready for a test run. All right, got it on the trailer. We're getting ready for a test run. Captain Guy, Southern Live Bait. Here we go. It's crazy. You don't realize how big this motor is on this little boat until 
until you see it on there. Woo, she big. First time this boat floats. We got the boat dog. It floats light, huh? Yeah, it does. Like super, super light. light. Standing up there. Have some weight yeah. up front. So this is my buddy Guy. He's got Southern live bait. If you need any live bait for fishing, give, me a call. give him a call. Look him up on social media. He's an awesome captain. He's got a squad of boats. I'm gonna show you right now a little clip of one of the boats that we built uh, last winter. Um, but anyways, we're gonna go for a test run and that's Russell, official boat dog, bird chaser. We got our drone meister. Chelsea's filming with the drone. So here we go, we're gonna rock and roll. It's a very technical wiring harness. Well, that was pretty anticlimactic and typical boat life. So we didn't even make it a couple hundred yards off the boat ramp and the motor started overheating. Basically the water pump took a crap. Um, if they've been sitting for a while and are older, um, the second you use it, put it under some load, it's, it's possible that the water pump, the impeller just fall, fell apart. It's not pumping water now, so, um, you know, this is part of part of the process. So we're gonna pull the boat out and uh, swap the swap the water pump. <laughs> Chelsea's flying the drone like a nut. Jeez, <laughs> I saw that. Oh my god, see the drone? Yeah. Uh, so, anyways, we're uh, gonna pull the boat out, change the water pump, and uh, have to give it another another test. Dang it! We're so close too. So this is one of the boats I was telling you guys about earlier. Look at this bad boy. How sick is this thing? Comment below if you can guess what boat this is, what hole this is. Well, we got the problem. The problem got us, but we'll get it. So a guy had a really good point. We could tell taking this apart that all of this had been redone. Um, the bolts for the lower unit, they all had looked like fresh uh, anti-seize. And then even this water pump, the housing itself, I mean, look at it, it's like brand new. So although this has a brand new impeller, if it sat for years, um, it can, can rot, you know, so food for thought even though you might buy a motor something to use that has a brand new water pump that's been sitting for a while it could be like this right here southern live bait you guys want to catch largemouth fat mouth fat. <laughs> i'm not a fisherman some of you guys already know that guy's the pro bait for everything anything and everything well, I don't know. The real bait. You want to catch like cabillion pound marlin and tuna and wahoo and kingfish and all those things. Yellow tuna snapper. Yellow tuna snapper. He's your specialist. Just call him. Any fishing questions you have. What size hook to use. Pound test. You saw his phone number on his shirt. Call him. All right. Lower unit's back on. Water pump. We're ready for test run. Test Round two. Round two. Round two. Round two.
So we're gonna do some guesstimates. We're gonna guesstimate top speed. What do you guys think this thing will do? 200 horsepower, 19 foot aqua sport. I'm putting a number in my head. Guy, you got a number? 48. 48. I'm going higher than 48. Guy's being conservative. He knows this thing will go faster than 48. Better know it. Bad juju. I'm going, I'm gonna add 10 to that. I'm going 58. Oh, God. <laughs> I don't know if I want to be on this thing at 58. Oh, this. I got it. Yeah. Oh, man. Oh, man. There's the drone. Woo. 30. Oh, God. I was right, 43! 43! We are just running the Aquasport! Yeah! <laughs> Woo! 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 Oh god, I've erased myself. Captain Guy, and we just finished an epic test run in the Aqua Sport. I'm gonna say, Guy hit the, the nail on the head with the speed guesstimate. Well, I don't know yet. That was pre trimming. No, I think you were closest. So we'll check. We use the Navionics app to log the run, so we'll be able to see what speed we did. That was fun. That was fast. Uh, I mean, we kind of knew it would be a little rocket ship. This boat really ideally needs like a 130, 140. That's what they were built for. Um, I mean, I guess some of you could argue you can never have too much power, but you guys know I like fuel efficiency and if I'm like 20 knots, I feel like I'm just hauling ass. So um, now whatever the, <laughs> this boat gets is gonna feel like a turd after that. Well, friends, that concludes part two of the Aquasport build. Thank you so much for watching this video. All your, your channel love means the world to me and keeps me going to do more builds like this. Again, big thanks to FGCI for all of their help with making these videos. Stay tuned for part three because we're gonna go, I'm not, I can't tell you. You're gonna have to watch to find out. Until next time, see you soon.